Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game University, flashgameu.com, and I want to show you a technique today I just used in a game I made for a client. And this game had a lot of constants in it, and I didn't want to have all these constants just buried in the code, so the smart thing to do would put them at the top of the class, um, but even then they were still in the code, and this was a non ActionScript programmer who was a client, and I wanted to have them somewhere external where they can adjust some things in the game without having to go into the code at all. So what I did is I put them in an external file and this is a very useful technique especially if a game has a lot of constants so I created here a demo uh, external constants dot FLA which all it is is uh, just a blank movie and I've set the document class to be external constants so it will use external constants dot AS and let's go ahead and get uh, get the code and take a look at it so I'm going to paste this code in here um, that I wrote so i uh, just going to create a package here and this is not a standalone package for uh, importing constants. This is basically this was going to be a small game with a bunch of constants. This would be the code at the top of the class. So I import a bunch of uh, general things I need. Um, I'm going to need the URL request and loader and events for this specifically in display would be because this is going to control the movie which is the display object. So the class is external constants and I'm going to create one variable here that we're going to use. It's going to be game constants. This is another advantage of doing it this way. Instead of having like 12 or 20 different constant variables declared at the top of your class and having to remember the names of each of them, uh, you can have one variable called game constants, for instance, and have properties of that. And you can have as many as you want and you're not adding more variable names to uh, your program. You do have to remember the property names though. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, so the uh, constructor function is simply going to go ahead and call load game constants and then this, this is the function here that will go ahead and load what we need. So it's going to create a URL loader and then create a URL request with the name of the file. It's going to be game constants.xml. Then it's going to go ahead and add an event listener. So when the loader is done loading, it will call complete load game constants, which is the next function. Then it's going to initiate the load. The complete load game constants is going to take as a parameter the event that called it, which is really handy because the event.target is actually the loader. So notice I don't have the loader declared at a class level. The loader is just in this function and it's thrown away at the end of this function, but then it comes back in as the event, the event target to be specific. So we go ahead and cast that as a URL loader because ActionScript doesn't know what this event is. So we cast it that way so that the program will compile. Then we're going to set game constants equal to the loader.data. And we're going to cast that as XML because again, this is just a piece of text coming in and uh, Flash doesn't know that uh, this is supposed to be XML, so we're going to cast it to XML, which will also serve to convert the text to XML. Then, just to show it work, we're going to look at one of the properties of game constants, the speed, which is going to be one of the constants. Let's take a look at what I mean by constants. So, I'm going to create another ActionScript file that's not actually going to be used for ActionScript. We're going to create it using the new and create ActionScript file, but when we save it, we're going to save it with the .xml uh, extension. Uh, the ActionScript editor is actually just a general text editor in this case. And here's what we're going to have inside. This is basically just a document called external constants, XML document, and there's going to be a bunch of different properties in here. Speed, number of enemies, board size. And you can see how a client might want to change these and, and mess with them. So these are three, and in the project I was doing there were more like 30 of them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and save this and basically uh, we're going to just run it here and test it out. So here we could see in the output window we got 7 which indeed was the value of speed. So now every time we wanted to use speed in the game we can usually simply use const game constants dot speed and similar for the other constants in there. Uh, the uh, interesting thing is see how easily I was able to access this just by casting this XML here I was able to call the name of the XML variable dot speed and it instantly went into the document this name is inconsequential right there and grabbed the speed property so as long as your XML file matches your property names you're good. One disadvantage of doing things this way is the fact that you're not doing strong typing here I mean the speed is really coming in as a string right here and in some cases you even have trouble sometimes adding 
numbers like that together, what it actually take is a string and append it to the end of uh, another number and create a string. So what you can do to get around that is you could simply have a speed variable that's an integer and then bring in the external constant from the XML file and cast it as an integer or convert it and then you've got uh, a faster way to access speed. But in my case it was more important that the variables be external than I have that little extra boost of speed. I was not calling these constants that often. So here's a quick look of how to actually uh, externalize some of your constants. Very handy uh, and you can see how simple the code is. It's almost worth just putting in the front of any game that you do and especially if you're working in a team of people with some maybe some designers and you want to give them the ability to change some things in the game without coming back to you as the programmer. I'll put the source files up at flashgameu.com. Uh, also of course uh, if you're watching this on another website um, you might want to go to flashgameu.com to see the high resolution version of it which is easier to read the the code. Um, and you can also leave comments for me there. Uh, thanks a lot. This is Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game University.